Got another thrifty scratch build for you this week. It's a very tall, imposing set piece. Could be used for any number of things in your game. This was inspired by and is similar to, but definitely not the same as, a Baleful Realm Gate by Games Workshop. Here's some clear plastic sheet. It's pretty sturdy. It's probably, I don't know, a millimeter thick. It's from packaging. You know, sometimes you see the box of a product with like a see-through window so you can see what's inside. That's the kind of thing that this is from. Cut a rectangle, seven centimeters by 17 centimeters. Now take some dollar store foam board, or if you're not based in the US, this brand is Ready Board, and we like it because it's really cheap stuff and the paper peels off easily. If it doesn't, just wipe some rubbing alcohol on it and it should peel right off. Cut a 25 millimeter strip and texturize it by taking a ball of aluminum foil and rolling it or stabbing at the foam. Cut a piece and hot glue it to the plastic and make sure to have a five millimeter contact area like you see here. In other words, 20 millimeters are hanging over the edge. Then apply a mirror image of the foam to the other side. And work your way around the whole thing this way. Uh, for the arc at the top, use a compass. Should be a radius of 30 millimeters. The end goal is that the width of the clear plastic showing is 60 millimeters. Here's two thin plastic tubes. I recently bought some new paint brushes and they came in these tubes. Now, I don't expect you'll have the exact ones, but the idea is find any kind of tube or half pipe shape. I cut these in half lengthwise and then chop them to the proper height and hot glue them onto the sides of the frame like you see here. And then some thin bits of foam to cap them off, as well as at the top of the frame. Also note that I tore away some random chunks from the top corners. For the base, I wanted to do a two-tier setup, with each of them able to accommodate a 60 millimeter base. So this is foam board. Happens to be the good stuff, not dollar store, but either should work fine. Just place the portal frame and draw a shape that you like. Cut it out roughly, the rougher the better. And then trace it and cut a second copy of it, again being rough with it. Hot glue them together. And then use this to trace the lower tier shape, which also gets a second copy. And we hot glue all these layers together to get a nice solid base that should be resilient to warping. Back to the frame. Apply white PVA glue to everything except the clear plastic in the middle. In this case, those tubes I used are smooth plastic, so they're not going to hold acrylic paint very well, so they need to be primed. And white PVA glue is a poor man's primer. I can't spray this piece because I don't want anything on that clear plastic at the middle, so glue did the trick. Anyway, this will dry in less than an hour, faster if you have a fan on it, and the whole thing will have a lot more strength. While I was at it, I threw on some gothic looking beads. If you're artistic, you could also take the opportunity to etch the foam with some drawings or something like that, more similar to the model that inspired this build. So healthy amount of hot glue on the bottom of the base, and attach. Then spread out some white PVA glue and flock with pebbles and some sand. I recommend about 75% coverage with the sand. With that dried, take your hot glue gun and start teasing hot glue onto the perimeter of the portal. This will simulate a wreath of flame. Choose a few spots and have some tongues of fire lashing out from the perimeter. And do the same thing on the other side of the plastic to match. Black Bomb. Then do a heavy dry brush with dark gray. Followed by a lighter dry brush of tan and of light gray at the same time. And finally do a very light dry brush with plain white focusing mostly on the edges and the corners of everything, sort of like an edge highlight.
I had planned to paint those beads with gold and maybe glue on a Swarovski crystal or something, but I actually kind of liked them as is, so I might revisit it in the future, but for now I'm leaving them as part of the stone. That just leaves the fire. Solid coat of yellow on all that hot glue. Probably need two coats since yellow paints are generally all terrible. Then gonna brush on some orange. This isn't a dry brush per se. I mean, you'll load it with paint, but angle the brush so that it only catches the high bumps. Then do the same thing again with red, but with a little less pressure. And at this point, it really starts to look like fire. You could also do a final very, very light overbrush with black to get a charred effect in some spots. And before we go to the table, I'd like to take a moment to thank all WCV sponsors. This week I draw your attention to Heroes Horde, which is an excellent resource for 3D printed scenery, including, but not limited to, all True Tiles products. So if you're into 3D printing, even if it's just to supplement your conventional crafting, it is worth a click to check it out and see what's what. So I'm fairly happy with this. The fire didn't come out great. I think the lashing tongues needed to be like, maybe thinner or more unidirectional instead of swirling. I don't know. But the stone looks great. I'm happy with that. And the whole thing's really sturdy and bold. It looks great on the table. Different paint scheme would give it new life, too. Uh, black stone with green flames for an eldritch kind of thing. Um, sandstone with blue flames for a divine portal. In this case, I've gone for sort of a gateway to the abyss. In any case, it's a great centerpiece for a big encounter in your D&D campaign, or, of course, as terrain for your Warhammer table. So I am Wylock. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.